This press is a single stage press, which means that you're going to need to install a die, a separate die, for every stage of the operation. Okay? So we're going to full length size. Now, what I'll do is I'll zoom in and show you guys um, what's actually taking place here. But essentially, the fire casing is being um, sized back down to uh, SAMI dimensions to fit in your firearm. And then the decapping pin is pushing the oil primer out. I'll reposition the camera and show you the primers popping out, as well as a close up as uh, to what's going on here. doesn't require a whole lot of force. I mean we're just sizing pistol ammunition. Now with this Lee Challenger press I used to size 300 wind mag cases on this thing and it took care of them without a single problem. Alright so there's our full length sizing. It just falls out, falls into this little catch and then down into the tube. I won't show that whole process because we need to move on to other things. I'm trying to keep this video from being, you know, ungodly long. But I know how it is um, for a new hand loader. You know, you're wanting to get as much information as you can and kind of get an idea of how things work. So this is the sizing process. You know, as I said, the casing is being sized and deprimed at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and finish these up and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, we have our sizing operation is done. So we're going to take our full length sizer out and we're going to replace it with the case expanding die. And like I said with the auto disc powder measure this is also a die that you can use um, to charge your casings. Okay, Go ahead and raise the ram all the way. Screw the die in until it touches the shell holder. and then back it out a complete turn. Alright, at that point, go ahead and take a casing that you've sized, put it in the uh, shell holder, and go ahead and get it up into the die, and then just screw the, screw the die in as you bump the ram up into the die, and then just check the flare of the casing and take whatever projectile you're using. In this case I'm using a 100 grain Lee cast Makarov bullet that I made myself and then we're just going to spot check these casings till we get barely the amount of flare that we need to accept the bullet. You, um, you don't want to flare the brass too much because you don't want to work hard in it and you only need the amount necessary like about like that. See how the bullet just sits in there? You want to be able to start it with your fingers, just barely. So now that our flaring die is set up to our liking, what we'll do, raise the ram until it comes in contact with the die body, and then give it some pressure, and go ahead and tighten down your lock ring. Our flare die is now set up. All right, now that we've got our flare die installed, we're going to go ahead and add our primer feeding tray here just drops in place like that. Now hopefully you can see in the video, you should be able to see, that when the ram is on the upstroke all the way up in contact with the die, this little priming arm kicks out right here. Now what's going to happen now, let's go ahead and put our brass back in the shell holder. What you're going to do is you're going to go up, flare, while the brass is inside of the flare die. Go ahead and bring your priming tool over. Press the little lever here and it drops a primer into this arm. On the downstroke you'll be flaring the brass and then come all the way down to the furthest extent of the travel of the ram. Give it a little pressure and prime the casing. So you can flare and prime in one operation saving you time. See, we just uh, primed that casing there. Flaring casing. 
All right, the casing's up in the die. Took our safety feed over, press the little button. All right, we've got a primer in place. Coming out of the die, all right, we've got our flare. And then coming all the way up, the extend of the lever up in its up position, give it just a little bit of force. See that? That's all it took. We've got a primed uh, pistol casing. I'll do it one more time. I know I, I don't want things to get redundant here, so I'm trying to keep it straight and to the point. All right, so up into the die. Um, this priming arm, after time, it'll kind of break in. It'll swing out a little easier. But sometimes you might have to kind of, you know, use your finger and just give it a little bit of gumption. All right, so safety prime. Push the little button. Got a primer. All right, coming out, we've got our flare. And then coming up and giving it a prime there. All right, so I'm going to go through and flare and prime all these casings. We'll talk about dropping powder charges. Okay, we've got our scale put up here. Now, I've got the 10 grain ball set to zero. And this little slider here allows you to adjust um, in tenth of a grain increments. See, that's one grain. Three grains, four grains. See how those lines do? And anything in between. So it works in three lines. So if I've got three lines right there, that middle line is on the four. That would be 3.4 grains of whatever I end up weighing out on this thing. For zeroing it, we're going to set it to zero. All right. Now, to zero it, if you want it right on the dot, you notice how there's a tick on the zero on the end and then there's a tick on the nine and you can barely see showing up on the eight and the one that's ideal that's right where you want it so I'm just gonna take and push this little button right here to lock it in place alright now we're ready to zero it just take your empty tray set it on there just make sure that the actual beam, balance beam, can move freely. There's two magnets on the inside of this base that magnetically dampen it. Now we can see right now that it's zeroing just a little bit on the low side. The point of this, um, the needle on this balance beam should line up with this little point that's on the base. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, small ring right here and we're going to turn it out. Uh, away from the beam because what that's going to do is basically put more weight on this side and balance everything out. You can see right there that we're still just a little bit on the hot side so all I got to do is just give this beam just a little maybe a quarter turn. I'm trying to work around the camera so bear with me. Alright what you can do is just kind of set your finger on the top like that to uh, limit the travel and then just let it magnetically dampen all right, you can see we're just a little bit on the hot side. Let me just, I mean, that was like maybe an eighth of a turn. Doesn't take much. Again, I'm going to put my finger there. All right. Well, it magnetically dampens out just fine. We're right on the money. So now our scale, uh, uh, scale is zeroed. We're going to set up to throw our charge of four grains of unique, and we'll get to uh, working with the powder measure. Okay, we're going to set our scale for four grains of unique. Now normally you want to start at the starting load if you've never hand loaded before but me I've used four grains of unique in my Makarov and it works excellent so that's what we're gonna go for. Alright see how we got those little ticks showing on the one and the eight and then the large line showing on the zero and the nine and then our grain meter is showing four so we're right on four grains. Okay, here's my little Lee powder measure. Now, this isn't the one that came in the kit I just cracked open. This is one that I've had for years. I've got it bolted to a small block and then that block is C-clamped to my bench so that I can, you know, remove it and use it whenever I need to. We're going to take some Unique. We're going to fill the measure up about halfway or so. Now, anytime I'm using, you know, no matter what I'm loading up, whatever powder I'm using, I go ahead and keep the reservoir right there behind the powder measure. That way I know that I've got unique in this powder measure. 